Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight you guys know what it is, a new nation is out. So we need to go over the commanders for that nation. So hopefully you guys got a snack. If not, we'll wait. Go get you a snack, go get you something to drink, and I'll see you in a second. All right. Now, I apologize to those of you who speak French. Uh, please do not shoot me for the uh, <laughs> pronunciation that I'm going to completely ruin. So, just a forewarning. Starting off, we've got Andre Lemonnier. I'm assuming. Could be Lemonnier, but I think it's Lemonnier. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you guys think of my pronunciation. Uh, but, what is his first base trait? Well, his cruiser's detectability time after firing the main guns is reduced significantly, actually. So, you fire your guns, you have less time to be detected after you've fired your guns. Which is a good thing when you are in a citadel-infested cruiser. <laughs> As the French cruisers seem to be. Um, but, let's look at his stats. Well, we've got Burn It Down XXL. Nothing different there. Chance of fire. Beyond range increases the range of your battle or your cruise ship, cruiser, not cruise ship, cruiser, main guns, <laughs> which is actually better than this, but I end up using a lot of HE, so I wanted as much chance to set fires as possible, though honestly this is probably the better go. I think I'll change that now. Moving on, what do we got? We've got igniter, chance of fire being caused by cruiser's HE shells, 2%. Now, obviously, this would go up the more you have it maxed out. Uh, but, you also have torpedo visibility range increased. Or, torpedo range increased by a significant amount. 5% is not bad. And it goes up to 8% and probably goes up to maybe 10 or 12% beyond that. So, that's interesting. Not bad. So, that's actually a good one that you might look at instead of this as well. Uh, if you're going to just like a cruiser torpedo build. That being said, moving on, we've got Punch Through, which is one of my favorite perks on a cruiser captain. Cruiser's main gun AP shells do more damage and have a better penetration. So, always love this perk. Other than that, you have maximum movement speed increase and you have the uh, engine boost reload time increased but your detectability while engine boost is active is decreased which is interesting for you destroyer captains out there i know there's no french destroyers at the moment actually no this would work for cruisers as well because some of the french cruisers have engine boost so uh yeah something to think about uh then we have steer clear which is rudder shift time and steering gear repair time nothing unusual there and increase the precision and accuracy of your cruiser's main battery shells. You know, I love my dispersion builds. This is where I usually end up with my cruisers. Well, with, uh, with my cruisers and battleships, actually. Um, and then his legendary perks, he gets an extra consumable. Or he gets a buff to his reload time on his cruisers. Both of these are good, but I think the extra consumable is always going to be the better bet. Because you get things like an extra... Uh, for them, you would get an extra engine boost, um, things like that. Uh, it's very good. Sonar, it, you know, or uh, radar for the Americans, you get radar. Um, not sure if these get radar later on, but uh, yeah, not bad. So this is your, uh, basically Norman Scott. If you're an American uh, cruiser build, this is Norman Scott, but this is the... Reach out and touch people in the most nasty way possible, cruiser build. Let's move on. We've got Andre Rue. I think that's that's the best I can do. His uh, base trait is grenade or Grenadier, which is increase your cruiser's HE shell damage. So, pretty decent. This is a good one for uh, your build if you're going for a fire build have this guy as your backup like uh inspiration atlantis i'm talking about you <laughs> oh wait i mean no atlantis don't look don't listen to me nobody needs more he uh fire damage from you guys <laughs> burn it down xxl he also has no uh surprise but he also has ingenious which 
decreases the incoming splash damage of HE, but it also increases the traverse of the cruiser's guns. So, a good perk there. Piercer. Increase armor penetration of AP shells flat out. Interesting. I think that's the first time I've actually seen that perk. So maybe this is a French-specific uh, perk. Interesting. His next, we got Before It's Too Late, which is Torpedo Visibility Range. And we have Maximum Cruiser Speed Increase with Rudder Shift de uh, Decreased. So both good and, yeah, good perk. What do we got next? We've got Velocious, which again is Increase Maximum Movement Speed. Then you've got Incoming Damage for Cruisers Reduced. Your armaments get more HP, and your armaments take less time to come back after they've been knocked out. Now, obviously, they can still be completely destroyed, but if they're just knocked out, it'll take less time for your uh, arms to come back. Then we've got Detectability while Engine Boost is active, and Engine Boost Reload Time again. So this is, this is another one that uh, we saw on the previous Commander. So it's nice to see some of these are actually... Uh, crossing over so it'll be interesting to see what you get from there now here we get steer clear which is rudder shift time and steering gear repair time and then you've got acoustic chamber which gives you an extra sonar charge plus you get extra sonar duration and reduced sonar reload time so that's very good and it's a pretty decent reload time buff 10 percent is no joke and that'll only go up like, it starts at 10, it may go to, you know, 15 or 20% by the time it's done. And then, of course, consumable charge or, again, damage... Well, this one's damage control party reload and duration. So, Andre Rue, not a bad spongy captain. As you can see, this is kind of the turtle, turtle cruiser captain. Moving on, we've got... Louis Violet. I'm assuming it's Louis, but it could be Louis, so I could be wrong. He appears to be a destroyer captain, considering his base trait has disappeared. Destroyer's de uh, detectability time after firing the main guns is reduced. And then contact imminent. Increase the travel speed of your torpedoes. Then you've got quick fix, which is inc uh, incoming splash damage is reduced. So that's your HE damage. Which on a destroyer could be huge. Could be the difference between living and dying sometimes. Uh, look at me now. Increase the ship concealment rating by 2%. Then we also have increased maximum speed of your destroyer. Cost of reduced. So maximum destroyer speed increase. Rudder shift time decreased. Oh, actually increased. So it's worse. Your rudder shift is worse. But in a destroyer... You don't really need, you know, it's not going to hurt you as much as it does in the battleships. You know, battleships already have slow rudders, and then you add extra on top of that. It's a pretty big, pretty big nerf. But for destroyers, you still got to be careful because you're used to having super nimble, and it might take you that extra half a second and cause you to get torped. So you never know. But you get an extra 2%, and that's just the base. It could go up. Now, you also got to watch the penalties when you go into legendary ranks. Uh, I believe once you get to Legendary 2, it doubles the penalties. So uh, keep that in mind. You might want to keep the, keep an eye on that before you go Legendary. Uh, decrease detectability of your ship while engine boost is active, but increase engine boost reloading. So engine boost takes longer. This is that French, uh, or one of those um, perks that we've seen on the previous two commanders. But you get extra concealment while your engine boost is active. So... It's worth a trade. Then we've got Torpedo Tube Reload Time Reduced. So if you're going to Torpedo Build, which if you're in a Destroyer, probably want all the help for your torpedoes that you can get because that's your main threat. Uh, then we've got Glass Cannon, which is Precision of Main Batteries Guns on Destroyers. And the Dispersion of the Main Battery. Both good. Except you lose 5% of your maximum hit points. On a destroyer, that might not be worth it. Especially if you're not planning on using your guns a lot. I haven't actually looked at any French destroyers. I know they're not in the game yet. So, 
no chance for me to like kind of give you guys an idea of whether that would be worth it or not. But next we have stand or fall. Reduce all armaments reload time as the ship sustains damage. So the more damage you take, the reload gets faster and faster for every 1% of health lost. So imagine what happens if you get torped right off the bat in your French destroyer, right? And you're super low on health. That's going to be a significant boost because it's 0 0.05 for every one hit point. So let's say you've got a, let's try to make it easy math, 90% of your health gone. Okay, so 0 0.05 times 90. 4.5%. Somebody will have to do the math for me, but I think it's 4.5%. So, I don't know. I guess if you get shot a lot, maybe it'll work for you. Uh, probably would go with the reload time on the torps, though, <laughs> personally. Uh, smoke on the water, that's the smoke screen dispersion and deployment time. So basically what this is, is your smoke screens last longer, and they take a little bit longer to deploy. So you may get an extra tick of smoke. So your smoke may actually cover a longer area if you're still moving while you're pumping your smoke out there. But they'll also last longer. Each each tick will last longer. Sidestep. Range of the destroyer's main guns is increased, which is good. Incoming fire dispersion is increased, which is also good. Means people are less likely to hit you. And the rudder shift time is increased by 10%. Oof. That's a big nerf to your rudder. But that's up to you. That's one of those perks. This, probably not that, that good of a perk, necessarily. But are you willing to put up with the penalty? Personally, I probably would. Um, I don't get myself into too many situations usually in my destroyers that I have to worry about dodging torpedoes. So rudder shift isn't necessarily the, the be-all end-all for me. It does come in like handy once in a while, but very, very rarely do I find myself in, in torpedoes. <laughs> uh, unstoppable engine repair time is two and a half percent better, but it also, once it's completely mastered, allows you to not completely come to a stop while your engine's busted. You can keep moving. So that's actually huge. I see several people running that rather be torching chance of fire being caused by the destroyers he shells goes up but the destroyers main gun he shell damage gets heavily reduced not sure that one percent is, is is worth seven percent now once you start upgrading this how much does the the bonus go up versus how much does the penalty go up that'll be something to look at if it's you know close maybe but otherwise this is probably your best bet so, uh, yeah, pretty decent cruiser, or not cruiser, but destroyer captain here. Moving on, we've got, oh boy, <laughs> Philippe Oboyono. That's what I'm going with, Philippe Oboyono. I hope I didn't slaughter that, but I probably did. Powder Keg, he is a destroyer captain. And his destroyer main gun HE shells damage goes up as his base trait. All right, so then you have torpedo speed and breakthrough or subsurface. Is this what I'm thinking it is? No, it isn't. Uh, but this allows you to get your torpedoes back quicker and they go faster. So this is a good, good perk for destroyers. But you do get the the nerf to your main guns for that perk so keep that in mind that being said my japanese um Rizo tanaka i think is his name he has this and he also has breakthrough i believe which is uh where your torpedoes do more damage moving on we've got sea detectability range minus two percent detectability of destroyers minus two and a half but you lose 2.5% of your hit points. That would probably... Let's see, flat 2%, but this could be used for any ship. Battleship, cruiser, doesn't matter. Uh, this is specific to destroyers, but you lose 2.5% of your health. It's not a lot of health to lose, but that's going to probably at least double. 
So you're looking at probably 5% by the time you get it maxed out. And, I mean, it's an even trade. 5% uh, detectability for 5% of your hit points. I mean, if you're getting seen less, you're not going to get shot less, right? So not, not too bad. Detectability while engine boost is active. We've already seen this one. Plus 50% on the reload time. That is interesting. Again, like I just 50% reload time increase on your engine boost. Like as much as the the extra concealment seems like it would be a good thing. Like if you're, I guess if you're charging in to try to torp somebody, you get that extra little boost to your concealment to allow you to get a little closer. But the 50% nerf, like that is straight up. If it takes two minutes for you to reload your engine boost and you get a 50% addition to that that's an that's an extra minute that's three minutes you got to wait for your engine boost interesting then we've got torpedo tubes reload time again two percent then we have torpedo range increased by four percent but the range of the destroyer's main gun reduced by seven percent this is another one of those trade-offs if you're going torpedo build getting that extra four percent range is huge so yeah, I would probably definitely take that. Uh, then we've got reduce or reload time reduction per 1% health loss again. We've already seen that perk. Smoke on the water, we've already seen. That is your dispersion and deployment of your smoke screen. Then we've got destroyer be destroyed. Maximum destroyer speed is increased, but the precision of the destroyer's main gun is decreased, which is not good. Uh, but between the two, 2% 2 for now. I, I, in this case, I would probably take this because losing 5% of your range to go 2% faster doesn't seem like a good trade. Again, as that levels up, you would have to see where your uh, your bonus or your, your penalty increases. Maybe get it up to the, the maximum without increasing your penalty. You guys will have to let me know what you think about that unstoppable engine repair time and again at highest mastery level you gain reduced mobility instead of having your engine completely knocked out but the other one is give me speed which is engine reload or engine boost reload time engine boost duration and engine boost charges so you get an extra engine boost the duration is longer and the reload time is shorter that could be a good one so uh philippe Oh boy, or no. I hope. <laughs> All right, now we've got. Did we already do Fournay? No, we did Violet. All right. Okay, here we go. Oh god, they added an extra one. Louis Dartige du Fournay. That's my best, my best French. I, I, I'm terrible. I apologize. Bruska, I'm sorry. <laughs> Increase your ship's HE shell damage. Doesn't matter, cruiser, destroyer, or battleship, you get a nice 1.4% buff on your HE shell damage. Not causing fire, but just damage overall. 1.4% more damage with your HE. Not bad. Then we have contact is imminent, which is three knots to your torpedo speed. Nice. We have ramming damage dealt versus ramming damage taken. So this is the one where you hit people and you don't always die. You know, you get 30% reduced ramming damage when you hit somebody or they hit you. So you deal more damage and you take less damage. Uh, that being said, we have burn it down XXL. Chance of fire increased. Then we have increase ship concealment rating which is good, as usual. But increase main, main battery traverse speed for destroyers, cruisers, or battleships. This guy is kind of your generic uh, build. This is the guy that if you only have one commander, you would like this guy because he has a little bit that can help everything uh, instead of just being specific to one class. So that's always a good thing. Then torpedo visibility range is pretty decent. 3% in, uh, increase, so you see torpedoes from further away. Back in stock, torpedo tubes reload time is minus 
Um, then we have on second thought. This is where if your all if all your main batteries are fully loaded, you can switch shells from AP to HE or vice versa with 15% less time it takes to do it. And once you upgrade that, it, I think it can go as high as 50%. Uh, I could be wrong, might be 40 to 45%, but I think it goes almost to 50%, if not 50%, which is a huge thing for battleships. Uh, but cruisers also, I, I used to do it at lower tiers at cruisers, and it's like you instantly have your guns back. If you take a cruiser that's reloading seven, every seven seconds and your main batteries are fully loaded with armor piercing and you see a destroyer, you swap over. It takes like two and a half, three seconds to swap. That's amazing. <laughs> Increase the maximum speed of your battle sh or of, of your ship. Then we have smoke on the water again. Dispersion deployment of your smoke screens. Reaching out again increases the range of your main guns and the last one steer clear is your rudder shift time is decreased and steering gear repair time is decreased so if your if your rudder gets knocked out it takes less time to repair and it takes less time overall to go from one side of your rudder to the other so if your neutral rudder you'll notice it gets left faster if you're all the way left and you need to go right it'll go faster left right you guys get the get the idea i don't need to explain that part probably <laughs> unstoppable he actually has three perks to choose from here which is nice again this kind of goes with the whole this guy can literally be any commander for any ship if you have to go you know generic if this is the only guy you got you're you're still able to build a, a build specific to your your thing kind of it's not going to be amazing it's not going to be as good as having a battleship captain on a battleship or a cruiser captain on a cruiser or a destroyer captain on a destroyer but if he's all you got, you're in pretty decent shape because you got some decent perks. Uh, reduced engine repair time. And again, gain reduced mobility when disabled. And that is not specific to destroyers. So if you have a cruiser or a uh, battleship, this could help you too. Next, we have will to rebuild. Amount of HP recovered. So this is a battleship thing. And certain cruisers, especially British cruisers, they can recover hit points. So this is another one. Uh, what else does the graph speed? The graph speed, of course, it's German, so it wouldn't do you any good here. But, uh, but still, same thing. You can recover more health with your healing ability. And then the other thing that I almost always go for, which is the consumable charge. Just getting an extra consumable, and it's all of your consumables. So if you have uh, a plane, planes usually aren't as are, aren't as helpful for me. But if you have radar and sonar. You know, radar helps you see ships. Sonar helps you see the uh, torpedoes, or I guess hydroacoustic, whatever you want to call it. It allows you to see the torpedoes. Uh, healing. You're, if you're a battleship, you got your healing. This gives you an extra heal. You know, there's so many things that your consumables are useful for. Uh, but, not bad. He's kind of the generic commander. Next we have... Oh, I apologize for this one. Robert is easy. Robert. <laughs> because, right, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be Robert. Uh, Jojard? I apologize. I, I don't know how that would be pronounced. I've never seen that before. AU is usually O. I get that. So maybe it is exactly what I thought. Robert Jojard. I apologize. <laughs> uh, his... Base trait is Borer. Increases your battleship's AP shell penetration. Oof. But normally, yes. And honestly, on the French, it might not be as bad. Because that'll help you against other battleships. Because you generally, or at least from what I've seen so far, your, your guns versus other battleships are slightly underpowered. Because they're smaller caliber. They reload faster. They're more accurate. But... They're smaller caliber, which means they penetrate less. Uh, so you may need this on a battleship. Uh, it's your base trait, so you're stuck with it either way if you choose this commander. So uh, other than that, it looks like this is going to be my normal build for my dispersion build. So uh, you're kind of stuck. If you go dispersion build, you're going to get that. 
uh, which again, because of the smaller caliber, it's going to hurt you against cruisers and destroyers, obviously, because they over penetrations. But against battleships, it may give you that extra edge that you need to really get in and citadel battleships. So we've got not one for the nuisance. Risk of catching fire is decreased. Risk of flooding is decreased. That's generally what you see on the uh, turtle build. So we'll, we'll see where we go from there. Flammable Cannoneer is one of my favorite perks that everybody hates me for. It gives you extra range of your main battleship's guns. It also increases the precision of your battleship's main guns. At the, the like, risk of catching fire more. You're going to catch fire in a battleship regardless. Yes, it sucks, but it's going to happen. You have heals for that. It's not the end of the world. So getting the extra range and, and dispersion, or precision in this case, of your main guns is huge. Moving on, we've got crisscross. Traverse speed of destroyers, cruisers, and battleships main gun is increased. So your turrets turn faster. So far, though, I haven't had too much trouble with battleships on the French side with having slow turrets. They don't really have that slow of a turret. Uh, gyrating drill bits. This is one of the ones that I always pick up. And this is increases the main battery traverse speed and AP shell damage of your battleship at the cost of decreased maximum speed. So it cuts your maximum speed down. And you do notice, trust me, on my Iowa with the uh, Legendary 3, I think I'm at on Sims. It has doubled that to 14%, and now my Iowa barely gets up to 27 knots, and it takes a long time to get there. From 24 to 27, it takes quite a bit of time. So you do notice the reduced speed. But, again, 3% extra damage on your AP shells, and the traverse of your guns is quicker. That's a pretty good trade. Then we've got on second thought, this is again the shell switching time, if the guns are all loaded. Uh, then we have marksman's ship, this is usually the one that I pick up for my dispersion. 3% better dispersion, but it nerfs your rudder speed, so you're going to turn slower. And in a battleship, like I said, this is a huge nerf, because 5% of a destroyer's isn't that big of a deal. 5% of your battleships, when it takes 40 seconds to go from one side of the ship to the other... You add an extra 5% to that, that makes it go from 40% to, or 40 seconds to like 50. I know I'm, I'm wrong on that. Just bear with me. I'm just trying to, you know, throw numbers out there. But you get what I'm saying. Instead of 40, it'll be like 45, whereas a de uh, destroyer might go in 5 seconds and go from 5 seconds to 6 seconds. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So the, the longer the time it takes, the more that percentage adds up. And then we've got Megalomania, reduced reload time of the battleship's main gun by 2.5%, and the detectability after firing your main guns is reduced by 6.25%. And that's just the base, but you lose 2% of your hit points. This is a big perk, but I still personally would not trade that for this. I would still keep my marksmanship, because I love dispersion. The more rounds I can hit you with, the more damage I'm going to do with each salvo. So, that's up to you guys. Reaching out XXL range of your main guns increased, or damage control party reload time is decreased, but your damage con uh, control party duration is decreased. So, one side you have, you know, good, it takes less time to reload, but it also lasts less time when you have it up, which means if you get caught on fire or something right afterwards, if it takes 30 seconds to do damage control party, normally and then you take 30 percent off of that good god i'm i'm trying to do math in my head again guys i apologize be roughly i apologize i'm just i'm gonna i'm just gonna leave it at that instead of i mean it should be it should be 10 percent, right so it's 30 percent, dummy so if it's 30 seconds take 10 percent you know, 10 seconds off that, it'd be 20, 20 seconds. So it only lasts 20 seconds, which means you're more vulnerable for an extra 10 seconds after, you know what I'm saying? I apologize. I, I got into a ramble. I apologize. This video is long enough as is. Moving on. Will to rebuild. Amount of HP recovered goes up or torpedo visibility range goes up, but you lose a repair party. Hell no. <laughs> this all day long. I'll take this. 
This is so dumb. If you choose to see torpedoes 5% further away at the cost of losing a repair charge, you, my friend, are just dead. Because that's what's going to happen. Repair charges are your gold mine. That's why battleships last so long in a firefight, is because they can heal. You take one of those heals away to where you only have two starting out, that's rough. That's real rough. You may have just cost yourself the ability to heal 10,000 damage. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take this. All right, so this is your dispersion battleship build commander for the French. Robert Jojard. I apologize again. <laughs> Finally, the last commander for the French Navy, we have Emile Japrat. I hope. Anytime I see G-U-E, I'm thinking of like Giuseppe, so I'm going, <laughs> I'm going with Japrat. So hopefully I'm correct in that. Otherwise, again, I apologize to those few who speak French, and I just murdered everybody's names. So, uh, yeah, but... Let's get this video over with. I know you guys are, are probably tired of listening to me ramble at this time. His perk right off the bat is going to be battleship speed increase. Now, the French battleship's known for their speed to begin with, so getting an extra boost of speed, even though it's only 0.25, can help offset the speed that you lose. No, it can't, because this is a completely different... I'm an idiot. I apologize. But extra speed on your battleship. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Uh, reduce the risk of catching fire or flooding. That's a good thing. Or, brawler means your reload time of your battleship's main guns is decreased, which is good. Torpedo visibility range is increased, which is good. But the range of your battleship's main guns is decreased. Oof. Now, it's a very good trade, if you ask me. Because you do lose 3% of your battleship's main guns. But we already know that there's one down at the bottom that's going to give us range, right? The reaching out XXLs, always in there for battleships. So you can get some of that back. But we're not going to because we're going we're to do a turtle build, guys. This is our turtle build. This is not a dispersion range build. This is survival class. Alright, let's do it. So turtle build, brawler, definitely taking this perk. Then we've got crisscross, which is your battleship's... Uh, cruisers or destroyers gun traverse then you have porcupine which is the range and precision and dispersion of your secondary batteries so if you're doing a just like a brawler build this is gonna be a good one for you so definitely want to take this over this next you have on second thought which is again the shell type switching if your batteries are all loaded this does nothing for you if your batteries are not all loaded. If you fire the front and then switch, it makes no difference. If you're not full, if you just fired and you switch, makes no difference. But if your batteries are all loaded and you need to switch to HE from AP to try to kill that pesky destroyer, this is what you want. However, again, we are going brawler, tor tor uh, turtle build. <laughs> Firefighter, damage control party reload time decreased. Risk of catching fire, decreased. Damage control party duration, decreased. Now, as we discussed prior to this, damage control party duration being decreased go, takes it from, say, 30 seconds of basic, uh, you can't be set on fire, you can't be flooded during that 30 seconds if you take HE or if you get uh, torped during the time that it's active. But, you're also gonna have less reload time and the reduced catching fire risk but then we have megalomania again which reduces the reload time of your ma main guns and battleships detectability after firing the main guns decreased but you lose two percent of your hit points now this is a brawler build so what do we choose here should we go with the damage control or should we take the small hit to the maximum hp for the extra reload of the battleship's main guns. I feel like in this case, this is the better option. Because they give you significant boosts with detectability time after firing the main gun, but also the reload time of your main guns. And that's only going to get better. That's at 2.5% right now. What happens when it's maxed? Is it going to be 5 7%? 
You never know. You have to try it. Then we've got Reaching Out. Again, this helps you get some of that range back that you lost with this one. So we get a little bit of the range back. Or Master Mechanic. And this is why I said we could, but we're not gonna. Because this gives you an extra repair party charge. So now, with this build, if you get him legendary, he gets an... Oh, hold on. He gets more HP recovered per charge by 3%. And that'll get better too. And you get three to start, so four. You get four repair charges. It's very, very good. So we would definitely take Master Mechanic. Then we would take Will to Rebuild. Because the other one is running with scissors. Rudder shift time is decreased. Traverse of the guns decreased. But the dispersion is increased. And that's no good for anybody. So definitely would take this. So if you're, again, if you're going for a battleship brawler for the French. We're going to take Brawler. Porcupine, Megalomania, Master Mechanic, and Will to Rebuild. And that's all I got time for. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. I apologize for the long video, but that's the only way to do these commanders correctly. So hopefully this has helped you guys in deciding what you want to do, which commander to use for which ship. So if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always... I will see you in the next video.